extreme cold and extreme heat okay learning objectives are by the end of the lecture students will be able to describe environmental trauma that is hypothermia and hyperthermia because of the in extreme of environmental temperature their causes clinical features diagnosis and treatments and in case of death there are postmortem findings and medical legal importance of hypothermia and hyperthermia Uh, students will be able to discuss the injuries due to local exposure to the cold that is chill blain trench foot and frostbite so first we start with uh, thermal injuries thermal injuries uh, means the tissue injuries results from the effect of systemic generalized or localized exposure to heat or cold to the external or internal body surfaces okay we classified thermal injuries into first is due to cold and second due to heat in cold they are divided into two first is the general effect of the cold over all the body and local effect of the cold general effect is the hypothermia when the environmental temperature of a, a person is extremely cold then he can suffer with hypothermia while the local effects they are divided into the expo chill blain frostbite and the trench foot means the exposure of the extremities or the parts which are exposed not covered properly and they are exposed to the extreme of cold either dry cold or moist cold which results in chill blain frostbite and trench foot and it injuries due to heat they are again divided same Uh, in the general effects of the heat that is the heat cramps heat exhaustion heat stroke you all are well aware about all these heat stroke and uh, heat waves because for the last few years we are having these uh, heat waves in our summer and uh, get ready for again summer is here so the due to a uh, local effect of heat that is burn scar we will you will learn this in next lecture okay today we will discuss all these things hypothermia is exposure to cold produces a hypothermia where the core body temperature is below 35 degree centigrade so facial or rectal probe measures temperature as low as 25 degree centigrade uh, or oral or axillary thermometers they are inaccurate moist cold is more dangerous dangerous as compared to dry cold okay but are the risk factors of hypothermia first is low environmental temperature the people who are living in high altitude where the temperature in winter is extremely drop to zero minus temperature they are suffering with this hypothermia and extreme of ages when the temperature is not so much cold but the extreme of ages like the uh, elderly around 60 or the children having a uh, compromising state of health they are more prone to suffer with environmental traumas immersions in water and wet clothing may lead to hypothermia then mountaineering and sailing in, in high mountains there is a minus 60 or minus 70 temperatures in winter so the mountain climbers climbers who went there mostly they were result in accidents or deaths like recently we have lost our national mountain climber mohammad ali satpara at k2 with his two fellows then hypo uh, other condition then uh, environmental temperature which may lead to hypothermia are hypothyroidism atherosclerosis in educated nutrition dementia or intoxicated persons like the having on tranquilizers or pls alcohols they are uh, they may prone to hypothermia this is the extreme of weather at k2 in winter 2021 we lost our mohammad ali satpara in february last month just because of minus 60 temperature minus 70 temperature they are uh, that mostly at their temperature person cannot survive because of the freezing temperature there is a, a loss of uh, vital centers in the brain and anoxia is there and uh, all the crystallization 
in the body fluids which may result in oxia and death. So effects of hypothermia, direct effects in the fatty, fatty tissues and myelinated nerves and indirect is ischemia due to vascular damage. Clinical features, they are divided into three categories. First stage is when there is a cold and shivering with fall in body temperature. This is the first stage. In second stage, stage shivering stops at or below 32 degrees centigrade. The person is depressed to lethargic, drowsy, and sleepy to stupor or coma. There is a muscle stiffness and mobility is impaired. Drunken gait or swaggering gait and respiration, circulation, and metabolic process, oxygenation there of the cells, they all, they all are very slow rate, at very slow rate. And the third stage is when a temperature up around 27 degrees centigrade when the person is exposed uh, at a temperature around 27 degrees centigrade for, for at least 24 hours. They may result in death due to failure of the vital centers because of anoxia. Thus, most probably the cause of death in uh, high attitude in minus temperature is anoxia. Complications are hemorrhagic pancreatitis. Uh, if the person is survived, rescued timely, then he can suffer with the complications like hemorrhagic pancreatitis, pneumonia, ulcer, and focal hemorrhages in GIT acute tubular necrosis of kidney and myocardial fibers necrosis. They are the complications of hypothermia, hypothermic survivors. This is Sadpara who has been declared dead with his two fellows because we are failed to search his body and belongings. What are the post-mortem findings if we cover a dead body from the dead environment? The external findings would be would be the pink or brown pink areas over and around the large joints like knee joint, elbow joint, or hip joint. Postmodern lividity is pink or bright red. It is because of the antimodern oxyhemoglobin and uh, its uh, diffusion in the skin after death. Edema may be seen in feet and lower legs. Extremities may be cyanosed or become white, that is termed as a white death. Internal findings are ice crystals can be found in the blood vessels, heart, and tissue spaces. Fluid become crystallized. Blood become bright red in color due to retention of oxyhemoglobin. Stomach, there is numerous brown black acute erosion ulceration with hemorrhagic similar to the pre death stress vision was his spots. There are uh, more than 90% of the Patients died because of hypothermia. They are present. Vishnuski spots are always there, mostly. And pancreas, there is a fat necrosis with adjacent omentum and mesentery. Lungs shows pulmonary edema and hemorrhages. Kidney acute tubular necrosis. In heart and intestine, there are microinfarcts in uh, about all or all organs of the body. There is a congestion of internal organs and perivascular hemorrhages in brain, muscles, pancreas, lungs, GIT, everywhere. Medical legal importance of such deaths, mostly these deaths are accidental. Like mostly the extreme cold, expired extreme cold is because of accident or drunkenness in mountaineerings like Muhammad Ali Sadpara. The sufferer and the person who lost in snow drift this is also accident who have been immersed in ice water due to some accident due to incidents rarely it's a homicidal infanticide and homicide in adults are rare where, where the unconscious person is left in freezing temperature then it could be a homicidal suicidal is impossible Paradoxical phenomena of paradoxical undressing is that it occurs in severe accidental hypothermia during terminal stage when the person becomes disoriented and confused and may partially or fully undress himself. Paralysis of the thermoregulatory center causes uh, a failure of vasoconstriction, lead to flow of blood from the core of the body and giving the exaggerated sensation of the warmth to the person to the victim and he may put off his 
close and uh, it may be confusing with the confusing suspicious sexual assault but this is a paradoxical undressing phenomena because of hypothermia another associated phenomena is hide and die syndrome hide and die syndrome seen in severe hypothermia and in rare cases this is due to the terminal hallucinations and disorientations victim is often found in corners under bed or under bench or behind the wall wraps and in case of outdoor he may attempt to burrow into snow or bushes that this is termed as a terminal burrowing behavior this may also lead to assumption of homicide or robbery but this is just because of the terminal disorientation hallucination resulting from extreme hypothermia this is all about the generalized effect of extreme cold temperature the environmental trauma but there are few local effects when the body parts who are exposed to extreme cold the first one is chilblain or erythema perneo what is it you most of the, the of you have experienced this uh, who have experience of winter of upper sindh or uh, punjab or northern areas in winter the most of the person they experience this chilblain or erythema there it is a redness itching skin and swelling of the extremities extremities means fingers and toes of the body and they may be associated with edema and blistering ulceration and hemorrhage changes may occur in if continuous exposure to cold in this condition is aggravated by warming so do not warm it with the temp high elevated temperature just keep it on room temperature maintain the room temperature not hypothermic and elevate the affected part of the body and uh, don't rub it because it may cause ulceration this is the chilblain these are the sore bumps on the toes these are the signs of chilblain i think you all are well aware of these lesions then second injury tissue trauma due to exposure to extreme cold localized tissues is trench foot this result from the prolonged exposure to severe cold that is 5 to 8 degree centigrade and it is because of the moist cold injury extremities are affected in these conditions mostly this is mostly seen in soldiers during winter warfare trenches and person exposed to prolonged immersion or exposure at sea clinical presentation they present uh, they are in pre hyperemic pre hyperemic they felt cold and anesthetic anesthesia of that ex exposed part and then hyperemic stage hyperemic stage the person uh, the victim he felt the burning and shooting pain in the affected area and post hyperemic is that decreased pulsation with paleness or cyanosis of the affected part treatment how we treat it because it is because of uh, moist cold then it should be air dry at room temperature and protect it from the trauma secondary infections by protecting it to uh, do not rub it do not uh, massage it to prevent the ulceration and further tissue damage or injuries and avoid direct heating just maintain it air dry and at room temperature it will slow down when the temperature body ultimately maintain the temperature and it will recover avoid heating moistening massaging and emerging in hot water this is about trench foot there is a blister because of prolonged exposure to moist cold this is a trench foot you see due to prolonged immersion into water this is a blanching of foot this is trench foot another thing another tissue injury which is due to dry cold is frostbite frostbite result from the exposure to great extreme of severe cold that is minus 2 to 5 degree centigrade it is a dry cold injury and extremities and also nose ear and face the area which is exposed to environment is suffers with frostbite it is only produced in living state in dead bodies after death it cannot be entered into the body introduced into the body and uh, the person the feelings the clinical presentation is 
In mild cases, there is a numbness, pricking and itching due to the involvement of skin and subcutaneous tissues, while in case of deep tissue involvement, there is infarction of peripheral digits with edema, redness and later necrosis and gangrene formation may be there beyond the line of demarcation that is the inflammatory line of demarcation that is redness. Paresthesia and stiffness of the deeper structures may be there because of loss of blood supply. Treatment is reforming and protection of the affected parts to rub it to prevent further damage. Tetanus and prophylaxis antibiotics should be given to the patient. This is frostbite exposed part of the nose, chin, the bony prominence, the zygomatic bone and the ear lobule which are exposed to dry freezing air. This is a frostbite on the fingers. You can see this is the blackening. Gangrene may develop here. Blackening total. This is the inflammatory zone line of demarcation. This is due to extreme cold. This is again frostbite of the ear lobule of the fingertip, proximal digits and trench foot. Uh, ideally it should be treated in hospital with oxygen in uh, inhalation and gradual rewarming, antibiotics, steroids and tetanus should be given. This is all about the uh, injuries, thermal injuries related to cold. The analyze is hypothermia and locally local tissue trauma with, with the chill blend, trench foot and frostbite. Now come to the heat injury. You, we all have experience of these type of injuries, heat injuries, because for the last five years we are suffering with uh, heat waves in summer season. So what is heat wave? When we label the temperature as a heat wave, a period of abnormally and uncomfortably hot and usually humid weather to be a heat wave. So, uh, to be a heat wave, such a period should last at least one day for one day. But the World Meteorological Organization says a heat wave as five or more heat waves is when the temperature uh, is uh, five or more consecutive days of prolonged heat in which the daily maximum temperature is higher than the average maximum temperature by 5 degrees centigrade or 9 degree Fahrenheit or more and means the temperature should be rises at least 5 degrees centigrade or 9 degree Fahrenheit from the average temperature of that area and it should and it should persist for at least 5 days it is according to world meteorological organization but mostly the heat waves we suffer is three to five days. The heat injuries they are divided in three categories mild, moderate, and severe injury. This is environmental trauma because of the extreme heat, hot temperature of the environment, okay, or all general effects of the heat on our bodies. They are categorized in mild, moderate, and severe. The first of mild injury is that the heat cramps. We all mostly experience these heat cramps. They may term as a minor cramps, strokes, fireman's cramps. Okay, they, this is because of the loss of electrolytes and water through sweating. When there is an increased temperature, we sweat a lot, and uh, along the water there is a loss of our electrolytes, which may result in heat cramps. And seen with workers in high temperature, mason works, they are working mostly under sun directly in construction work. And uh, when the temperature is high, there is a lot of sweating, a profuse we sweat and results in de dehydration and hyponatremia, which may result in heat cramps. Mostly it presents as a sudden in onset and severe painful progressive cramps occur due to dilutional hyponatremia in the muscles of arms, legs and abdomen. They may last in 1 to 3 minutes. Face is flushed and people is dilated. There is dizziness, tinnitus, headache, vomiting and complaints like any other suffering with heat. Uh, uh, with heat and then skin but the skin is moist and cool because of excessive sweating the 
skin is moist and cool the treatment is just first to move the person in a cool place in a shaded area and give him plenty of oh, plenty of uh, oral fluids uh, preferably ors to replace the electrolyte also same time and in severe condition it may be replaced by iv saline and electrolyte ring lactate water and advice to rest for two to three days what should we do if the person came to us who is suffering from heat extreme heat just lie down him and try to cool down his temperature low down his temperature by uh, if we have air condition it's uh, ideally very good but if not then don't worry we can apply the hot towel hot sorry cold towel with icing water or ice water bath should be there we can give him or the fan is there for the evaporation of heat and the temperature will be lower down the heat should be elevated and give him plenty of flares if he is able to drink otherwise we can maintain IV line to replace the fluid and electrolytes moderate injury is heat syncope okay heat exhaustion heat collapse or prostration in this there is a cardiovascular collapse there is a syncope due to intense dehydration because the person perfuse a lot sweat a lot and uh, it present as a headache dizziness fatigue there is anxiety impaired judgment vertigo is there hysteria occasionally psychosis is there there is increased pulsation skin is moist because of increased perspiration it may progress to heat stroke if the sweating ceases. okay and the treatment is just to move it from the hot environment in a cold shady environment there should be a flowing air by fan or there may be if available the air condition or cool down uh, lessen the clothes and apply cold water over the body over the hair and give him a plenty of fluids and ors to replace the hydration uh, water repletion and the electrolytes this is a situation of karate in during the heat waves in the last few years of summer people are wandering for the cold water for ice for shady area and we have lots of casualty during these heat waves the severe or fatal injury that is termed as a heat stroke we have experienced for the last last five years the low more thousands of people are die because of heat stroke also termed as a heat hyperparexia thermic fever or sunstroke the failure of thermoregulatory system due to direct exposure to sun due to failure of cutaneous blood flow and sweating this results in heat stroke there is a triad of cerebral dysfunction which are composed of impaired consciousness increased core body temperature that is more than 41 degrees centigrade by rectum and the absence of sweating is there neurological disturbance are psychosis delirium stupor convulsion and coma this is the extreme stage of heat exposure to heat in environmental trauma by heat when the temperature is around 50 we have experienced a 49 50 temperature in previous years what are the risk factors of environmental heat high temperature and increased humidity that's why the karachi people they are suffer a lot because there is a humidity in combination with high temperature which results in heat strokes increased humidity then muscular activity the person who are not taking care and they are going out and working in that environment hot and humid environment they are suffering a lot and lack of acclimatization that uh, the according to the climate you have to change your living attitude living style or you have to take some prevention precautions to cure yourself or to prevent the extreme of injuries so at 100 percent humidity even at 32 degrees centigrade temperature the person may have suffered with heat stroke 
but mostly during the heat waves in the last few years we have temperature around 45 to 50 um, and the humidity level mostly up to 70 degree 50 to 70 that's why we, there are hundreds of deaths during heat waves because of hot and humid temperature of Karachi what are the non-environmental uh, heat related uh, conditions in which the person having the hyperthermia but there is not related to extreme of environment temperature it is the old age okay? and uh, old age or extreme of ages they cannot uh, cope up with the little bit higher temperature then alcoholism obesity there may be a brain hemorrhages malignant hypertension there is thyrotoxicosis or salicylate overdose may result in hyperparexia uh, perceiving medication like anticholinergics antihistamine or phenothiazine may suffer with hyperparexia and use of major tranquilizers they are at risk of hyperparexia Types of hyperparexia are classic, which is seen in person with compromised hemostatic mechanisms during heat waves. They are the older persons. And uh, the exertional, exertional is seen in a healthy person. They are undergoing strenuous exertions and uh, in a thermally stressful environment like the during the heat wave and the temperature is above 40 and the humidity is around 50. It is an extreme environment of uh, for the heat stroke so one should avoid to work in that environment like the masons labor work they should be stopped working because it may lead to heat stroke and death treatment is immediately move to cold environment if there is a ac is well and good otherwise to in a shady area provide fan or air moving air it should be there unclothed and apply spread water showering with temperature cold temperature as much as 20 degrees centigrade and immersion in an ice water bath is very effective in case of severely affected victims and clopromazine and dizipon is given to control the shivering in such cases and fluid administration and alkalinization of urine are recommended in such cases what are the complications if the person is survivor more than 24 hours with this uh, heat stroke it, he may have uh, complications like lobar pneumonia myoglobin urea kidneys are affected then decimeter intravascular coagulation may be there there is acute tubular necrosis there is a hepatic hepatic necrosis how we can differentiate the heat exhaustion with the heat stroke okay in heat exhaustion the what are the signs symptoms and how do we treat heat exhaustion is a faint or dizziness the person felt faint dizziness excessive sweating is there and cold pale clammy skin there is a nausea vomiting pulse is rapid but weak pulse because of excessive sweating there is a dehydration muscle cramps are there in heat exhaustion uh, the principle of treatment is first to move at the cooler location shady location give him plenty of water to drink he is if he is conscious and he can drink so better is to give him plenty of ors and fluid then take a cool shower or use cold compressors okay while in case of heat stroke the symptoms are throbbing headache okay there is no fainting or dizzy there is a throbbing headache there is no sweating skin is dry hot and red the body temperature is above 103 degree fahrenheit mostly 105 degree fahrenheit the skin is red hot dry nausea vomiting is also there there is a vertigo with throbbing headache and pulse is rapid but strong pulse not a weak pulse like in heat exhaustion there may be a loss of consciousness in heat stroke and uh, um, ideally we should get the help emergency help for the heat stroke but the time being we we should move it in a cold places and try to lower down the temperature giving him ice bath or cold compressors 
but must be treated in under supervision of doctor. This is a picture of easy cold storage during the heat waves of 2015 when we have 2000 more than 2000 casualties were there during the summer heat waves and due to heat stroke they are purely due to heat stroke because we were not ready for it it was the first time in in our conscious so after that continuously we are suffering from heat waves during summers from since 2015 what are the autopsy finding in such casualties and dead bodies they are mostly non specific the person who are died with heat stroke the uh, autopsy findings are non specific mostly all organ shows edema congestion and particle hemorrhages brain is congested and cerebrum shows flattening of cari there is no proper uh, uh, furrows of sulci and cari then lungs carries a 40 hemorrhages fluid in the air passages is there heart shows uh, epicardial or endocardial hemorrhages in case of heat stroke death recognizing the symptoms of heat injuries either it is heat cramps or heat exhaustion or heat stroke how you can differentiate in case of heat cramps there is a painful muscle spasm caused by loss of salt from excessive sweating this is muscular pain and excessive sweating this, this is the description of the heat cramps and the treatment is same remove from the uh, hot environment in cold shady environment uh, excessive uh, uh, rehydration and uh, replacement of electrolytes and about and rest in cold places while in case of heat exhaustion when a person a healthy person who is performing a strenuous work in a hot humid environment what happened he is having a serious stage of heat injury that is heat exhaustion in which the person is having headache tired it become lethargic drowsy and there is a goosebumps of hair follicles there is a tingling in the skins and in case heart rate and breathing sweating nausea is there in case of heat exhaustion while in case of heat stroke body temperature increased and if not treated immediately it may result in coma in brain damage or death the increasing temperature very warm to touch is very warm to touch more mostly up to 505 degree fahrenheit or more than it there is a mental impairment, the person is very confused, agitative behavior is there and uh, mostly they lost their consciousness if not treated timely. There is a severe headache, nausea, vomiting and flu-like symptoms are there. There is a rapid breathing, heart rate is higher and possibly skin is dry and hot.